Um, hmm. Where do I even start with this one? I mean, I don't know if I can do another 76 games of this, guys. I really don't. Here's the thing. It's not like this was a bad game per se. This was similar to the Mavs game in that the Bulls were competitive throughout, but just some bad decisions, poor shot selection down the stretch that had them coming up short. And what's funny is you guys heard me say it so many times throughout the offseason. The Bulls lost so many games last year, 17 losses by five points or less, and you would have hoped that with the Bulls even just improving their three-point shooting just a little bit, they would have been able to turn some of those close losses into wins. But as you can see, we're seeing the same thing happen. You're running into the math issue yet again in which your opponent, even if they're not shooting as well as you, even if they're turning the ball over more than you, they are simply outscoring you from behind the arc and by a wide margin. It's not like they're making one or two more threes than the Bulls. No, it's more like seven or eight, which you saw tonight when the Nets torched the Bulls going 18 for 45 from deep and the Bulls 11 and 28. Not a bad shooting percentage for the Bulls, but when you don't take very many, you're not going to knock them down as often. To be honest, it's almost impressive that the Bulls keep these games this close when their opponent outscores them by 20 plus points from three. And the reason I say things like, I don't know if I can keep doing this all season is because I feel like I'm just going to keep repeating myself over and over again in all these videos. Because the problems fundamentally aren't going to change. Not when you have the same roster as you had last year. But even despite all of that, what makes a loss like this that more frustrating is that this was an easily winnable game. And while I know I've kind of been harsh on Zach and not all of this is his fault, but man, he really fumbled the ball in those final possessions. And I mean that on both ends of the floor. On defense, he was gambling by overreaching for a steal and then his man would beat him off the dribble getting to the basket, missing assignments, playing off the ball. And then on offense, bad shots, missed shots in the clutch, not smart plays at all. Couldn't hit that game tying shot on the drive, screaming that he got fouled. He didn't get fouled by the way. Then got his own rebound on the missed free throw on a later possession. And obviously more or less by accident, got the rebound and then couldn't hit the game tying shot, even though that was a hard shot to make. But I guess I get frustrated because we know Zach has been wanting to take these types of shots. Billy has always gone with DeMar DeRozan in game-ending possessions, and Zach feels he should be able to get those opportunities as well. But the fact of the matter is, Zach can't close. Yeah, sure, back when the Bulls were bad and rebuilding, he was somewhat clutch in some games. Everyone remembers the game against the Charlotte Hornets. But when you're on a bad team with little expectations, it sits differently when you're a team that is expected to win. And honestly, Zach, when it comes to final possession shots, or close to it anyway, ever since DeMar joined the team, I can't think of one that he's made. I could be blanking on it. You let me know in the comments if I'm missing one. But look, it's not just Zach. I don't want to just bash on the guy and him alone. I mean, how is it that the Bulls, who were in the bonus with nearly five minutes left to go in the game, a close game, were able to get to the foul line once during that stretch? And that was when Ben Simmons intentionally fouled Zach because they were up three and only wanted them to get two free throws. The Bulls, rather than attacking the basket, getting into the teeth of the defense and trying to make contact and get some easy trips to the line when they're in the bonus, instead, they settled for mid-range jumpers. How does that happen? How do you not either get inside driving it to the basket or getting it into Vooch, let him post up and then spread the floor and he can kick it out to you for a three? I just, I don't know. And look, the other thing I'll say is sometimes we get way too bogged down in the numbers, the analytics, myself included. You know, the Bulls aren't taking enough threes. Their offensive rating is this. This five man lineup has a net rating of this. They're only taking this many number of free throws compared to their opponent. Like, yes, analytics is important, but it sometimes doesn't tell the whole picture. And the big picture here is this team, they just don't play smart basketball sometimes. And they don't have the mental toughness to get through games. Not all the time, some of the time that is there, but I feel like more often than not, we just see this group having terrible situational awareness, poor shot selection, and decision making. And it's what's driving us fans crazy. Anyway, Bulls lose in the inaugural in season tournament game. Not that I really care about it being an in season tournament game, but the fact that it counts towards the regular season standings, that's what makes me care. I did like the court though, like initially I was having to squint watching the game, I wasn't really about it, but then it grew on me and my eyes adjusted and I really liked the design of it. But yeah, we're not here to talk about the court. I mean, there were some positive things to take away from this game. In the first half, especially in the second quarter, they played some of the best offense we had seen from them all season long thus far. Moving quickly in transition, spacing the floor, hitting their shots, they were shooting 50% from three at half and over 50% from the field and you thought, okay. The Bulls shooting slump is finally going to regress to the mean because we know they can shoot it better than this and what they've been putting up thus far in the season anyway, but then they more or less refused to shoot threes in the second half and their overall shooting started to fall even going inside as well. 
It was a better shooting night for the Bulls overall. They shot near 50%, but again, just not enough when the Nets are lighting you up from deep. Zach and Kobe, the Bulls' two highest volume three-point shooters, they couldn't get it going. They combined three for 14 from three. I mean, Zach, aside from the you know miscues at the end of the game, he had a decent game. Like he was more productive than just on the scoring front. Put up 24 points on 10 for 21 shooting, seven rebounds, five assists. You know, talked about it in my last post-game video. We needed to see more assists from Zach, and we got that. Kobe White also had 18, much better night for him in the starting lineup after it was thought he might lose that role in this game. But you know who did though? And it was the right call. Patrick Williams lost the starting spot to Torrey Craig. And wouldn't you know it, Pat played a lot better. He's just more comfortable playing in the second unit as a bigger offensive option for that unit. He's also better playing against the opposing team's second unit versus their starters. Not saying it was an insanely good game for Patrick Williams, but a season high, 10 points, knocked down a couple threes, had five rebounds, was solid on defense. It just makes way more sense for Pat to come off the bench. I mean, unless he just started balling out playing off the bench, the point where you're like, all right, this dude is pretty much having a breakout year at this point, then okay, you bring him back into the starting lineup. But right now, no, he's best served coming off the bench. For Vucevic, I mean, he's still missing a lot of those close range shots, and I just cannot figure out why. Hitting those tonight would have been the difference between the Bulls winning the game versus losing it. He still has been much better in crashing the boards, though, coming off of that 20 rebound night. He finished with 13 rebounds to go along with 13 points. Did have a big three late in the fourth quarter. Vuce is actually pretty decent knocking down big threes late in game. We saw that a lot last season. And then DeMar, 24 points, 9 for 20 shooting. Had a couple of air balls shooting from three, though. Eh. But for DeMar, a minus 16 when he was on the court tonight. Can't happen. And you know what, guys? It's not going to get any easier. Bulls are literally on their way to Denver right now to take on the defending champs tomorrow night in a traveling back-to-back. -back. Nuggets are also playing tonight as well, so it's not like they're going to be getting that much more rest, but they're playing at home in these back-to-back -back games. Who knows, though? Lately, the games in Denver have been like home games for the Bulls, and they've beaten them in the last two trips there, so we'll see. Not going to hold my breath, though, on this one. Anyway, let me know your guys' thoughts on the game tonight. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.